And down the bottom of it then here we have this beautiful stonework here of the angel. Look at that. In the year of our Lord, 1679, look at that guys, 1679, aged 58 years old. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm in Castle Inch, a little area, rural area here in, in Kilkenny. And we're here today to see the final resting place here of the Cullen family. Um, there's a very old um, mausoleum inside here and graves. So guys, as you can see just in front of me there is the entranceway into the, the burial area here. Um, there is a lot of restoration work going on here, so they're trying to preserve any old monuments and stuff. Um, there is information on the gate as you come in here. Now I'm not going to be reading all that, so if you want to pause the video, you can read the information that's on that there. So as you enter in here then we can see there's a lot of um a lot of work being done here vegetation here that they've gathered up from inside so I'm sure it was very overgrown in here um now there is photographs online as well so I'll add that to the video there's the old I suppose gate that was there before um to start to clean up this place that was the original gate so that's the entranceway into the burial area there and as you can see they've used a piece of wood here which is a good idea for now until they get the proper stone i suppose to fix it just to prop this area up here so it won't fall down so hopefully this won't fall down on top of my head when I'm walking in here, guys. But um, here's a beautiful one here. Look at this. And just look at that beautiful stone carving there. We have like, um, they look like lines. We have a crown. So it's a family crest that we see there, and it says, In memory of John Otwe, second Earl of Des Desert. And he was born the 20th of February, 1788, and he passed away the 23rd of November, 1820. And just below that then it says here, and of his son, Otway O'Connor. So there's a real Irish name there, O'Connor. Third Earl of Desert, born the 12th of October, 1818, and died April, 1865. So a beautiful monument there. As we can see that stonework on it there. So inside then the area. So it was an old church ruin. It's been used as the burial ground inside. So as you can see here as well, there's um now that's the original door. That door would have been i think around that area somewhere there probably would have been as you come in there's some plaques here memorial plaques i think they're missing off the wall and i'm not sure they probably have those somewhere
Yeah, but that's the old door. Now, just over here, we have a beautiful um, stone carvings here as well. Memorial plaques. And just see the side of it there. Look at that. Now, I believe this is very, very old. So we have the pillars each side, and they're made of like... I'm not sure if that's granite or marble or something like that. And down the bottom of it then here we have this beautiful stonework here of the angel. Look at that. So I'm going to read this for you guys. Now they have plastic over the they have plastic over here to keep it keep it safe, you know, if the inscription won't wear away and preserving it. Because it is very, very old. So I'm going to read this for you here. So it says, to the pious memory of Joseph Cuff, C-U-F-F-E of Castle Inch, Esquire, who departed this life on Christmas Day. B twenty twenty nine it says that's like the old style right in there if you can see that guys T W E N E nine eight ten in the morning in the year of our Lord sixteen seventy nine look at that guys sixteen seventy nine aged fifty eight years old now if i can get up under the plastic here i'll just try and show you what i can but just up there guys we have you mightn't see it there that's part of the monument here the old stonework that's in it okay guys just going to pause it there for a second so what we know about J joseph cuff who died in the 1600s is he took up arms in 1649 under Oliver Cromwell and we all know Oliver Cromwell he married a woman called Martha and she was the daughter of a Colonel Agmondesham Muschamp um, she had 20 children for good old Joseph here now he died at his seat at the Castle Inch and was buried in a vault within the church which he had prepared for himself. Now, the other thing is that his wife, Martha, who gave him 20 children, does not even get a mention on either of these Cuff family memorials. P presumably, she lies within the vault. Um, the fact that Joseph, I suppose, had the vault built within the church suggested that the Catholic Church must have been taken down some time prior to 1679 and the new Protestant church was erected at about that time, probably using stones taken from the dismantled Catholic church. So Joseph was a Cromwellian soldier and he would have been about 21 years old when the rebellion first broke out in Ulster around 1641. He subsequently served in the regiment of the Republican Army during its bloody campaign against the Irish Confederates. After the surrender of Kilkenny, Cromwell handed over a castle and estate known as Castle Inch in County Kilkenny to Joseph. Right, so the guy you see here, James Hoban, this is the very, very interesting part. James here. Uh, was a Roman Catholic and he was actually raised on the desert court estate that belonged to the Earls and the Cuff family in County Kilkenny. Uh, he worked there as a wheelwright and carpenter until 1779 when he was given an advanced student place in Dublin Society Drawing School. So Hoban owned at least three slaves who were employed as carpenters in the construction of the White House. 
and their names are recorded as Ben, Daniel and Peter and appeared on Hoban's payroll. So there we have a very old 1679 and the inscription is very interesting on in that because it said he died on Christmas Day and gives you even the time he died on that as well. Isn't that beautiful? It's a pity the plastic's over but I suppose they're trying to preserve it, you know. So that's inside the old church grounds here. Now there is a couple of graves outside as well. So we'll go outside and we'll have a look and see what we can find. So that's part of the old church just there. So we'll go and read a couple of old stones outside the old graveyard. Yeah, so we have here Castle Lynch Graveyard Volunteer Group 2021. To all those who have helped and contributed towards this graveyard cleanup, please each choose a stone and using a marker sign your stone with your name date it and decorate too if you like we finished when finished sorry please place your stone below here thank you isn't that lovely so in 2021 two years ago this place was cleaned up here and it's great to see communities coming together to clean up all these old places, you know. So here like the body of Benjamin Barton of Bally Line, eldest son of the late William Barton of Bally Line in the county Esquire. He departed this life on the 12th of May, 1888, aged 56 years old. So it's a small, small graveyard, but, you know, sometimes these very small ones are a lot in it. This one here, I think, is Nicholas is the name on this. Goslin Esquire, who died the 6th of June, 1917, I think it is there, and his wife, Catherine, eldest daughter of Sir John Blunden. Yeah, so that's a little bit of information there about the graveyard in 2021. The volunteer group cleaned up this. And you can just see there's a plumb line, we call those, going along the bottom of this. So they're obviously going to put new carbon or something on the entranceway going in there. So I'm going to make my way out this side. There's more graves out here. have some this one here we have here lies the body of William Meany M-E-A-N-Y who departed this life the 27th of October 1813 aged 55 years old and there's a great inscription on this here lies the body of Thomas Meany son of Mr. John Meany of Sellerstown he departed this life on the 21st of February, 1774, aged 30, with one daughter and three of his brothers. And there's a headstone there that looks like it's sinking into the ground. 
beautiful old graveyard and it's great that they did tidy it up and you can actually read these old stones now I don't know what that is guys if anybody knows what that is let me know I thought it was a bird feeder but it doesn't look like one let me know in the comments below so there's a couple of chest tombs in here as well we can see and I always find, you know, these old chest tombs, the inscriptions wear away on these ones faster than, you know, a headstone for some reason. I have this one here and it just says, Depart this life, the 19th of November, 1884. So the name on that is Power. So if there's anybody watching, looking for any Power family members, Ancestors, this is Castle Inch here in County Kilkenny in Old Graveyard, and I have contacted a couple of people on genealogy group page on Facebook. Um, so if anybody has joined this channel, thank you for joining. Um, and I hope I come across some of your, you know, family members or names that you might be looking for. Another old chest tomb. Love the old route iron one here railing going around this. Look at that. So the name on this is Sir John Blunden. He died April the 17th, 1876, aged 27 years old, very young, and his name is Sir John Blunden. So he must have been very important back in the day to have a name with Sir in front of it. Lovely old ones here. Erected by Elizabeth. Elizabeth Lambert, in memory of her beloved husband, Joseph Lambert of Cuffs Grange, who departed this life, 1851, age 50. Also her nephew, William Crawford, who died 23rd of March, 1855, age three years old. And there's a number of other names there, Crawford's. And there's a lovely inscription down the bottom, I'll read it for you, it says, When from the dust of death I rise to claim my mansion in the skies, even then shall this be all, my plea, Jesus hath lived and died for me. I love those inscriptions. More Crawfords here. Nice headstone. This is erected by John and Letitia, Letitia Crawford. In memory of their children, William, who died in 1855, aged three years old. Robert died the 13th of December, 1862, in the sixth year of his age. Joseph died February, 1873, age 15. Wow, so a lot of young people that died there from the Crawford family. Very sad. So rest in peace to the Crawfords. Very old chest tomb here. Has seen better days. Look at that. Yeah, so it's very, very important, you know, that people do a great job in these old graveyards and clean them up. Because it's part of history, you know, and it's lovely to see, and it's sad to see places overgrown. And I've seen a lot on my journeys that are just forgotten, sadly. So here we have, guys, it looks like actually a mausoleum here at the back as well. So it says, William... Hartford of Grange in the county of Kilkenny, Esquire, built this vault and entombed 
herein lays the body of Mrs. Catron Williamson, maybe, or Willison, the mother of his wife, Anne, and she died September the 16th, 1797, age 70. Wow, so William Hartford built this vault of Mrs. Catron, the mother of his wife, so he built this for his mother-in-law. And it does look like, yeah, it's a vault, guys. Look at that. Wow. Really old vault. It's all overgrown there at the top, but I don't know if they're going to clean. They probably will clean that up. And the door is blocked up on it here, guys, but look at that. The old door of the vault. There's the pillars there, one each side of the door. So that's all bricked up. So that's the burial vault there guys the old one as the front door of it there is bricked up as you can see and i'm just going to tell you a little story while i'm here do you see those little red yokes in there i remember when i was very young and i was with a friend of mine alan his name is if you're watching this alan you're probably going to laugh when we were young we used to play down around an old, you know, a forest, and I remember we ate those red berries. Of course, when you're young, you'd be inquisitive to know what the hell they were, but I remember eating those berries, and my mouth was on fire, and we ran all the way home and stuck our tongues into a, a, a cup of water to cool our tongues down. They were on fire, but... It was a funny moment back then that just reminded me of it there. Exactly those. Lovely chest to him here and designs on the side of it. Look at that. Stone carvings. Have another grave here. And this is the Reverend Francis Robert Sandys, rector of the parish for 21 years. And he died in 18. 1862 the Reverend Francis Robert so we have a mausoleum our vault out the back we have a burial area inside as well very interesting to see look at that old chain that's going around there on top of that that's the power family So a nice number of headstones in here. Interesting. But especially inside here, guys. And this burial area in here of the, the Cuff family. How interesting was that? Very, very interesting. An old church used as a, a burial area for the family here. And just up against the wall here, guys, as well, there's a, a headstone here that li is lying down. So it says, interred here in the same week, it says. I've never seen that before in an inscription. Interred here in the same week, 1756, lied John and Jane Broderick. To the inexpressible grief affectionate parents here light the remains of Mary Broderick who who sixteenth year and who void of 
utterance. It's kind of hard to read that, but you can see the names. It's just an inscription, and there's another date down here. August the 12th, 1774. But that's very interesting there. It's hard to read some of it. Um, interred here in the same week in 1756. So two people were buried there. That's what it looks like to me. Two people were buried there in the same, in the same week. So on that note, guys, I think I will end the video. There's not much more to see in here. Um, if you like this kind of content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and comment underneath, let me know what you think of what we found today underneath the video, make a comment, tell me where you're from or whatever. So for me here guys, I'm going to wrap it up, so take care, and I'll talk to you all in the next adventure.